Welcome to the GEM video training series. My name is Jana Latovsky and I am the Data Team Supervisor. This video will review some key methodological guidelines for your adult population survey. Although GEM provides a lot of information about what makes for a good survey design, and prides itself on the consistent quality of sampling methodology from team to team, you may be surprised to learn that there is no one standard GEM methodology. The only firm requirement is that each team collects a nationally representative sample of at least 2,000 adults. To help the team do so, GEM provides guidelines to ensure that various aspects of the survey design are not introducing any bias. So to this end, we specify or advise on proper choice of contact method, sufficient number of attempts to reach respondents, and appropriate timing of survey administration among other issues. Although some of these guidelines are stable, the specific survey design will differ from team to team, and every methodology should be custom tailored to your needs. One important aspect of the methodology that can vary among teams is the contact method. Data can be collected using any combination of face-to-face, -face, fixed line, or mobile phone sampling. A few teams are also collecting some data online, but due to a lack of nationally representative web panels in many countries, this is not yet a common option. The choice of contact method is based on feasibility, budget, and the possibility of bias. Questions of feasibility may include determining the fixed line penetration in your country or the ability to obtain an adequate mobile phone database. Though one contact method may be preferable, it may be far more expensive than another which Jim also takes into consideration when evaluating a proposal. And of course, each method may introduce bias. For example, sampling by fixed line is usually biased toward older respondents, mobile phone toward younger respondents, and face-to-face -face against people who are often out of the house. Your team must consider all these factors when proposing methodology. And although Jim will attempt to determine the best contact method, you and your vendor must ultimately anticipate any biases that we may not know of. Teams also have various sample design options. You can choose to collect a sample that is proportional to the national population, either to the age-gender breakdown in the country as a whole, or also in various predetermined strata. On the other hand, a team may choose to collect disproportionately more responses in one or more regions, such as a metropolitan area. This is often done if a team wishes to conduct more thorough analysis on that part of the APS sample. If you do choose to collect an oversample, you must submit at least 2,000 nationally representative responses, not counting the extra cases in that oversampled region. And you must sample this region according to approved APS methodology. The oversample can be submitted separately, but if it is part of the main APS data set, you must compute weight values to account for this inclusion. The minimum sample size of 2,000 respondents provides a reasonable confidence interval for the primary GEM measures at the national level. And this allows for meaningful comparisons between countries. But when deciding on the appropriate size for your team, keep in mind that if you wish to explore differences within population subgroups, a larger sample will be necessary. Here's an example of the percent of respondents which qualified for four APS blocks in six differently sized samples. You can see that the blocks often capture a small proportion of the respondents and may represent very few actual cases. So, if you only have 34 nascent entrepreneurs in Norway, for example, you must be cautious of your ability to apply detailed analysis to this subgroup. Another consideration is the age range. Teams can choose to sample the adult population, capturing respondents between 18 and 99, or the labor force, for those between 18 and 64. You can choose whatever is right for your team, but keep in mind that GEM only uses data from 18 to 64-year-olds to compute our APS indices. Yet another aspect of survey design is the number of callbacks and contact attempts. A callback is the attempt to reach a respondent once he is identified and targeted for the APS, as opposed to the attempt to reach a household before a specific person has been selected. For each, GEM requires a minimum of three if your team is conducting face-to-face -face sampling 
and 5 if using fixed or mobile phone. But you can certainly choose to make more calls and revisits, depending on the value and feasibility. Finally, keep in mind that data collection timing can bias the selection of respondents. So the APS must be administered at different times of day, both before and after work hours, and not administered during holiday periods or other times of year, which may impact the kinds of people you reach. To sum up, there are a number of decisions you must make about the right survey design for your team. You must consider how the respondents will be contacted, if the sample will be stratified, if you will oversample in one or more regions, or perhaps based on some other criteria, how large your sample will be, what age range you will use, how many callbacks and contact attempts you can make, and finally, when your survey will be collected. Thank you for taking the time to watch this training video. Hopefully, this helps you better understand our standards and your options in crafting the optimal methodology. If you have any questions, please contact me or the data team and we will be happy to help.